it's time to make a video on hypergamy. Hypergamy is just the fact that women usually like to date up. We want usually men that are more educated and make more money. And a lot of that has to do, I think, because uh, a woman who plans to have children knows instinctively she's going to need a man to support her with that child financially. And she's going to take time out of the workforce to nurse the child or raise the child. And so she will need a provider. Okay. But that... There are several reasons that this is really changing. One has to do with the fact that fewer women are now wanting children, but even for those women who do, there are fewer men who out earn women now. And second, a lot of men, because of the divorce rate is higher now, a lot of men are saying, I don't really want to be the provider because if you leave me, the courts are gonna rule in your favor and I'll end up having to pay half of my money out to a woman who's no longer in my bed. And that's really unfair to men. But it's also unfair to women who are then left with these children. And usually the woman does more of the caretaking for the children. And then, you know, who's supposed to raise these children? I personally don't think it's good for children to be raised in daycare. And moms who have children in daycare all day and come home, they're tired. They don't have love to give to that child until the weekend rolls around, if even then. So this whole thing of rushing kids off to daycare and moms rushing back to work, I think it's a very sad thing for children. And as a person who's interested in personal development space, um, I can just say that these children are just going to have to do their own reparenting and loving themselves when they're grown up, you know, like we all, like all of us have to do. But the reason that hypergamy is less possible now is because men are just not making as much money as they used to be. Um, let me just read you about the pay gap. If you're a single woman with or without a college degree, you know if you're looking to date a man equal to or greater than you in compensation earning potential, there are very few of them available. Why? because we have been graduating more women from college all around the world. Single women instinctively feel that something has changed. The dating world is completely different now. You have to understand the new gender reality. The dating pool is not going to grow smarter or better. Men are not going back to college. The dating pool is only growing older. The reason that you don't know that this is happening is because people are not really talking about it. Um, I really like um, this gentleman that I met at a book event um, who's on top, Daughters of Liberation. He's an artist who has made art and who has kind of changed some famous artwork to, to show this trend of um, women out graduating men from college. So um, you can look any of this up, just Google it. Female graduation rates, male graduation rates worldwide, and you'll get all the data and statistics. So here, here we have a chart from um, college graduation rates. Here are men and here are women. So in 1979, 40% of women graduate from college, but 60% of men. And now the few and fewer men are going to college. Nobody knows why. I looked into this a few years ago and I talked to a lot of people and people in education. Nobody knows why. And more and more women are going to college. So now we have two thirds of women graduating from college and only 40% of men graduating from college. So there are going to be a lot of women who are not going to find this college educated guy. So I think it's really good, ladies, to start looking at people in the trade professions to date or people who are entrepreneurs who never went to college. So, but there is another reason you may not find a man who earns more money than you, and that has to do with uh, what's happened to wages in this country since the 70s, wages have been flat. 
you know, I think the upper one or two percent of wage earners has kept growing their wages, but for the average person, their wages have stayed flat. They've lost benefits, they've lost um, uh, um, pension funds, they've lost their free health care, and um, their wages have not grown. Why? Um, it has to do with outsourcing a lot of jobs to cheaper places, China, Vietnam, Mexico, um, other India um, has to do with more automation that human labor isn't needed as much and it also has to do with more women in the workforce displacing men all these women that used to stay at home are now working so the labor pool is much larger there's more competition uh, there's more supply for the jobs that are available and it used to be in the 70s that a man could graduate from college go to work in a factory and support a whole family. Uh, the houses were smaller, you know, there might be five people in a two bedroom, one bathroom house, but they had a car, they had a house and they had a mom who stayed home. And this is just really not really that practical anymore for many, many people. So what's happened now is that women are finding that they have to work, even if they don't want to and that it's more difficult to find a man who earns more money and who is like a good provider making over a hundred thousand a year that's rarer to find so i think that we have to wake up and realize some of the changes that are happening in the workplace and then also that has brought about um also changes in how we behave socially men are now expected to show more feelings and to be more in touch with their emotions, which is their feminine side. And women, by in because they're in the workforce and they're competing, that's brought them more into their masculine side. But usually in a relationship, women usually want a masculine man. But the problem is if the woman has been competing in the workforce and she brings this kind of very, um, you know, I can do it myself, I'm gonna get things done, I'm in charge, you know, I'm driven. Um, look at me, I have this great job mindset into dating, it falls flat because men generally, especially successful men, they're not looking for a, a woman to be all that money making. They don't usually care what the woman does. They want someone who's sweet and nice and kind and happy and a woman stressed from working all day is not happy she's tense but this is just the new reality you know that we're in so times are shifting times are changing i don't have all the answers but i'm making you aware of a lot of these shifts that we're having to adjust to um so i showed you about the college graduation rate so here you can see another graph. This is very interesting. You have 10 million degrees of separation, he calls this chart, and it shows the cumulative U.S. college degree gap in favor of women from 1982 to 2013. This is how many more bachelor's degrees and how many more total college degrees women have over men. And this is not just happening in the U.S. This is a worldwide phenomena. And um, he has like a little a table in here, but you can find this online. You can see that for, you know, all these countries, the male and female college enrollment ratios. Um, women are outnumbering men, even in Bahrain, United Arab Emirates, um, Tunisia, Cuba, the Slovak Republic, Algeria. I mean, we can go on and on. It's happening worldwide. And from what I was able to read, nobody really knows why it's happening. So here's another interesting painting. It's showing the women, you know, in charge, in their suits, in the knowledge economy. And the knowledge economy is where the higher paying jobs are, especially in science, engineering, and technology. And then here are the men, you know, working in the trades, which are often lower paid jobs, but 
not necessarily, but he's kind of making a very interesting point here. The problem with this, again, that women usually don't want to marry down and men usually don't want to marry up when it comes to education and income. But again, we're going to have to take a look at this. Um, here we have an, uh, uh, an interesting picture. Hopefully YouTube won't take me down. <laughs> this video could be taken down. But it's making the point of women are to marry. Most will have to marry down. It's a very provocative um, painting. Marrying down. Yes. That's what this is supposed to portray. She is wearing a thong. She's not nude, by the way. So don't report me to YouTube. It's just art, you guys. Now, this is also provocative. In traditional dating, we do want the man to pay. But if the man isn't going to be the main provider or if he's struggling financially, he may not want to pay. So here we see, um, uh, you know, the woman is paying. And, you know, when they do talk about men earning more than women, they're looking. It's not a very um, honest statistic because if you compare job by job and number of years in the workforce, women are out earning men. In fact, um, here was from a workplace salary uh, published in Time Magazine in 2010. In metropolitan areas, the median full-time income of women is 108% higher than that of their male counterparts. In Atlanta, women are earning 121% of men's pay. In New York City, 117%. And there are many more young college-educated females than young college-educated men. So they're naturally stepping into better entry-level positions because more women are graduating from college than men. So it's not fair to say that women are underpaid, but when they leave the workforce or after they have their second child and they can't take on all the additional work or stay late anymore because they also have, are responsible for raising the children, then their pay does drop behind. And I have to be honest, I, I don't think that it's so good for a woman or for children to just have one person raising the children. It really takes a lot of people to raise a child well and it's really nice to have a man there who can provide and pay for the children. And I know I watched some of that red pill and blue pill stuff on YouTube. And there are some men who are very angry with women. They feel like women just use them for their money. And I'm sure there are just women who use men for their money. And I'm sorry that they had those experiences. But I know many women who do not use men for money at all. When they got divorced, like I, when I divorced my husband, I didn't ask him for money. I didn't think that it was right to just take his money. Uh, he's remarried and he got remarried again because I think he had such a pleasant marriage with me, more or less, not always pleasant. And now whatever money he makes is for him and his, his wife. And that's how it should be, unless there are children involved. I just, you know, and that's why I think it's so important for women to be able to support themselves because if a woman doesn't have any earning abilities and now she gets divorced and you know if the man doesn't support her how is she going to work if she hasn't worked in 20 years she could be an escort like me that was my way out of it it's like i haven't worked all these years so i'm a sex worker that's how i can that's how i escaped the trap i don't want to work 50 hour weeks i don't think that's good for women or for feminine energy and the men that want a feminine woman, you can't have a woman who is feminine and in her joy if she's stressed from working a lot and raising children or just stressed. This, so I really am a big believer in women just working part-time. So feminists are going to hate me. Um, you can work more if you want, but then that puts you in that very masculine competitive space and i think if women are honest a lot of them are just doing that because they have to earn the money or they're trying to prove something to themselves or to their parents that they're just as good as a man or that they can make it or maybe they want to challenge themselves but i think if a woman 
is really honest, she's going to say, I don't really want to work that hard. And I would rather stay home on the day that I'm cramping for my period. And I don't really want to take my child to the daycare when he's four weeks old. And for me to be in my feminine essence, I need, I want to make a nice home and I want to be in my heart. So, hey, that's just a little side note of some of my beliefs around this. This is really nice. Here, Aubrey is depicting that the role of women, how the role of women has really changed over the past 200 years, where from being servants to men, from being servants to men, to being the leaders in the knowledge economy. I just think his paintings are really powerful in depicting this important social change. And then here, you know, he gives some factors which have contributed to the change in the role of women, which is the advent of electricity. Women didn't have to keep carrying all the um, fuel, birth control pills, the feminist movement, increasing rates of divorce, increasing rates of college enrollment, and the advent of the knowledge economy. All these have helped to contribute to this change in the role of women. Here he's depicting the fall of men, and that has to do a lot with the rise of the knowledge economy where the wages for labor are not as good as they used to be, like jobs in the factory, for example. And women are not finding men they want to marry, you know, again, with who are more educated or make more money. These men are becoming more rare. In fact, for every three women graduating from college, there are two men graduating from college. So there's always one woman who's going to have to marry a guy who's not college educated. I myself, I'm okay with that. Are you? In closing, I'm going to um, uh, put this in as a photo. I'm going to reverse it so you can see it at the end. If you want to follow Aubrey on um, on his social media, I have met him a few times, and um, he's definitely an interesting person and a wonderful artist. And um, I think he is has done some very valuable work with this um, with his art in depicting a shift in the gender roles and in dating that not that many people are talking about. And um, I've had this book for a couple of years, but it's inspired me to make this video called The End of Hypergamy. How feminism and outsourcing has lowered women's prospects for marriage or changed women's, forced women to change their view on hypergamy something like that i have to come up with a good title thanks for watching my video guys and that is not a nipple that is a heart so this is definitely face uh social media friendly